the darkest, but your light is greater. You are our God. You are our God. You are our
hold your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling
Well, today is National Grandparents Day. And grandparents, uh, so often, uh, you know, we, we do emphasize greatly uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day. And sometimes us grandparents, we, we just get left in the dust. And, but today's your day. And I celebrate you today because I are one. I mean, I am one. And, and uh, not only that, that uh, I have gone beyond grandparent into the, grand, great, the great grandparenthood uh, stage. But if you're a grandparent because of our age, you don't have to stand. But would you raise your hand? Okay, look at these grandparents. Yes. All right. Well, we celebrate you today and ask God to bless you. You know, it is proper. It's fitting for us to recognize and pay tribute to our grandparents. There are people, groups, and cultures that actually worship their dead ancestors. They worship them in ceremony and ritual. But I'm not referring to ancestry worship. But I'm referring to treasuring the memory of our deceased grandparents and to honor our living grandparents. The fifth command, if you were to look at the Ten Commandments, and I know you can't maybe all the way in the back read that, but the fifth command there is to honor your father and your mother. And if you are to honor your father and your mother, how much more so should you honor your grandparents? I believe without a doubt that grandparents are worthy of double honor. And I wish that grandchildren would really begin to show that to grandparents in America. There are many grandparents today that are sitting at home and will never hear from their grandchildren. They will not have a phone call. They'll not have a visit. There'll be no interest at all because life goes on and there's not that honor that is paid to grandparents, which is why today I honor you. I respect you and I want to pay tribute to you today. The Lord honors you. There would be no grandchildren without you. It's like Bill Cosby said to his kid, I made you, I take you out of this world, and I'll make another one just like you. It's just that simple. It's probably not that good to bring up Bill at this time, but nevertheless. <laughs> but I remember, I remember when he made that statement. Nevertheless, we honor grandparents today. Can you say amen? amen. My message today is very brief. It's just entitled, Grandparents are Grand. You're grand, baby, you're grand. Grandparents are grand. Now, I've made an acronym out of the word grand, okay? The letter G represents the word good. Good. I'm certain there are some grandparents in our nation and around the world that are not good. There are those that have not treated people in general, or even their grandchildren very well. But I would say the overwhelming 99% of grandparents are good. They love their grandchildren. You know, uh, I just took a moment yes, or not the other day to look up the word good. And good means this. I want you to hear it. It means something or someone that provides happiness for another, having a happy or successful relationship. See, when we say something's good, there's, it's beyond something that's just good. We need to know that it's something that makes someone else happy. That's good. And grandparents are good. They make their grandchildren happy. They make you happy. There's nothing any more delightful, enjoyable than to have our little ones that sit on our laps and mess with us, they pick at your face and pull your hair, they, they do all kinds of stuff, and it just makes us happy, and we do good things for them in return. Grandparents are good. You see, it all started with God in the Garden of Eden, 
whatever he made Adam and Eve. And I don't know how many good grand, 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 grand would go back because we all go back to Adam and Eve. Every one of us. At some point, every one of us are related. We're all human beings. And matter of fact, scientists have already said humanity has come from one set of parents. Don't you know that just burned them up to have to say that? That we all just didn't evolve at different spots on the planet. We've all came from the same set of parents. That's a proven fact in DNA. We all are related. And after God created Adam and Eve in Genesis 1.31, when he looked at everything, God saw all that he made and said it was very good. Say very good. good. Grandparents, you're not only good, you're very good. I celebrate you today. Hi, I'm Melissa. (laughs) Anyways, uh, I have four good grandparents, but one in particular was my papa. He um, was just very, like, knowledgeable, and he always shared, like, history and wisdom with us, so I think that that's something that I loved about him. My name is Elvia, and one of my grandsons, Ezra Boone Jr., uh, when he was a senior in high school, he went to the Catholic school in Modesto, and they asked him to write an essay on somebody that had great faith. And he picked his nana. So he made an essay. He got a very high grade because he talked about my faith. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, what's the letter G stand for? Very good, baby. Very good. Okay. Now, the letter R represents the word reliable. Grandparents are reliable. The word reliable means worthy of one's trust. Grandparents are worthy of their grandchildren's trust. So when I think about worthy, as I'm thinking about how I can illustrate this for you, my mind went to Moses, the Ten Commandments. He's the leader of Israel. And he led Israel out of Egypt and to, not into, but to the promised land. And Moses' grandfather, so I want you to see the connection of here this man's life of who he is. He is Levi. Levi is the son of Jacob, the grandson of Abraham. He is reliable, dependable, and that connection is made from Abraham down to Isaac and Jacob, Jacob to Levi, and from Levi on down to Amram, his father, and then to Moses. Grandparents are reliable. They can be counted upon, and there was no one any more reliable than Abraham. But what he instilled in his heirs, the legacy that he left was imparted, and God chose Moses. Grandparents, please be reliable to your children. Pass down to them the teaching of God's word. Teach them to have faith like Nana uh, Ellie. And pass down to them the reliability of the word of God. You know, as a preacher, uh, my grandchildren, they love me, but They know that I'm a preacher, and sometimes they don't really always want to hear what I have to say because it it conflicts with their lifestyle, and so it's not always an easy thing. But I guarantee you one thing. I will not be harsh. I will not be cruel, but I will always, always stand for the Word of God. I will always lovingly, kindly to the best of my ability, to continue to encourage my grandchildren to live for God and to take to themselves the word of God and to live according to God's word. So I'm going to be reliable. I'm not going to give in to the fads. I'm not going to give in to the trends that that we are being pressured to do, to accept this, to accept that. Look, be a foundation. Be a rock, be solid, be reliable, and hold to the Word of God. I'm Stacy. 
Stacy Murray. Stacy Murray. And my grandma always had dollar bills and Werther's originals in her purse when she came over to give to her grandchildren. All right. So we can rely on her for candies and monies. <laughs> now, how many of us have done that? That, uh, but back in my day, my grandparents didn't have the dollars. All they had was nickels and dimes and quarters. If you got a quarter, it'd be like a dollar today, because that was big to them back then. I could take a quarter in my grandmother's hometown in Comanche, Oklahoma. I would get into the theater, have a soda, a co little Coke bottle, and a, bo and, and a bag of popcorn. Now, the movies that we saw, they were all westerns. So, I mean, we go see them cowboy movies, man. So you could do a lot with a nickel. I mean, with a, even, even with a quarter. But, but I'm saying with a nickel, I could go in and get me a, one cent for a pack of kits. You ever eat them kits? Yeah. Oh, I love them kits. Kids, you, if you haven't eaten them, you just missed out. Okay, okay, Joe's got one. Yep. Yeah. Now, you may not know this, but I'm, I'm a mutt. My, <laughs> my, my grandfather is from Durango, Mexico, and my... My uh, mother is from Sicily. From uh, where? My grandmother is from Sicily. And then on my mom's side, she's Portuguese, Irish, and Scotch. So Dear Lord. I'm a mutt. I know. But, but well, I love going to her house and visit her and have spaghetti. It would be spaghetti and refried beans in the Woo! same house. Boy. Look at What now. a blessing. The letter A represents the word absolute. Absolute means exercising authority without interference by others. Grandparents are absolute. Now, what does he mean? Well, to, before I really get to what I mean, I want to kind of lay out this idea of exercising authority. I think of King David, his, his son uh, Solomon. I think of David's father, Jesse. He was the grandson right here of Ruth and Boaz. There's authority. There's authority in our grandparents. Those that established themselves, those that uh, were successful in their lives and wanted to pass it on to their own uh, children and grandchildren. You see, when we think of Boaz and Ruth and how they met and it was through their line. You know, Ruth was a Gentile and, and Boaz was, was a, was a Israelite and it was a Jewish man and through him came the Messiah. So we think of that love relationship between uh, Boaz and Ruth and uh, we think of the love between grandparents and how they love each other and how they've had their children and how much that love then has passed on down to their grandchildren. But you see, when I come to this absolute ruling thing, it's, I mean, it's the king's rule. Kings ruled. Now, children have kind of forgotten that uh, grandparents rule. You don't understand. See, you can put down your set of rules and when you drive away, grandparents are absolute in their rules. Your rules went out the window when you left. It's, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I've experienced it. I used to tell Brenda's grandparents, her parents, now don't feed these boys this, and that didn't mean anything. Because when we drove away, what do you boys want? <laughs> she gave them everything they wanted. Now, somebody posted on Facebook this set of rules, and I don't know if we have the image of it. They're called house rules. I can't read them all there, but, but uh, whatever those rules are on there, I, I thought it'd be a little bit clearer than that, but there it is. What does it say? What does it say? It says, kitchen, kitchen open 24 hours, expect to be spoiled, dessert comes first, uh, no parents allowed, <laughs> laugh, giggle, snuggle, sleepovers welcome, storytelling, play lots of games, Bedtime negotiable, always have fun, endless hugs and kisses, cookies for breakfast are acceptable, what happens here stays here. <laughs> Don't tell me that grandparents aren't absolute. They have the rules. And you can set down your rules, 
But when you leave, so do your rules. Grandparents' house rules, rules. They are absolute. And so I want to say thank God for grandparents that love their grandchildren and bring as much joy and happiness into their lives as they can. Now the letter N represents the word, believe it or not, the word neat. Grandparents are neat. What does that mean? Well, there are a variety of definitions for the word neat, but the one that I'm referring to, and every definition I give to you came right out of Webster's. Here's one. It's called excellent. Neat means excellent. It means of the very best kind. Grandparents are neat. They're excellent. They're of the very best kind. And as I think of the very best kind in grandparents, I think of Noah. The scripture says he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. It says in Genesis 6, verses 8 through 9, it says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Listen, if, if that's not a sermon in itself, I don't know what is. We are living in the end times. And Jesus related the end times to the days of Noah. Noah was the only man that found grace or favor, excellence in the eyes of God. Grandparents, please be faithful to God. Be a neat. Be a neat grandparent. Let your grandchildren, my grandparents are neat. They're excellent. Be a person that God shows favor upon. As God blesses you, I believe that you then bless your children and grandchildren. As you know, Noah was used by God to save humanity. All humanity was destroyed. See, Noah wasn't trying to live and to please everybody and be like everybody. I wish the church people would quit doing those kinds of things, that we got to compromise in so many areas of our lives just to be like somebody else. Look, that doesn't bring favor of God to you. Here's what will bring favor of God to you. When you begin to live according to his teaching, his precepts, his guidelines, he will bless you. So I encourage you to live like Noah. Live like Noah. Be a neat grandparent, a person of excellence. So God used Noah to save humanity and all the creatures that God brought upon that ark. Um, I think that he was the neatest grandparent of all. You know what? By the way, you know who his grandfather was? Methuselah. Methuselah was 969 years old. The oldest man that lived in the Bible, you'll find that in Genesis 5, 27, if you're jotting down verses. He was the, he was the, he was the, the, the grandson of Enoch. Do you remember Enoch? Enoch was the one that was said about him. He walked with God. Genesis 5, verses 22 and 24, and God took him. See, Enoch is a type of the rapture of the church that one day the trumpet of God is going to sound and we're going to be caught away. The New Testament teaches that. We're looking for the coming of the Lord. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds of the air and to be with the Lord. We'll be transformed, changed, it, quicker than the scripture says in an atomus. Quicker than the blinking of an eye, you'll be transformed and caught up to be with the Lord. I think that's pretty neat. I think that's pretty neat. That's an excellent legacy to leave, leave for Noah. Enoch walked with God. God blessed him. His family walked with God. And when you get a chance to read about Noah, it says he walked with God. 
Remember the verses that were up there? He walked with God. Noah walked with God. His grandparents walked with God. See here? This is the account. Remember, that's the bottom line. He walked with God. His great-grandfather's grandfather, Enoch, up here walked with God. It was actually his great-great-great-grandfather walked with God, passed on down to him. He walked with God. And God used him greater than Moses. He used Noah to save humanity and the creatures that we have today. And so I think grandparents are pretty neat. Grandparents, God wants to use you as you influence your grandchildren to see them saved and come to the Lord. Use every skill, every opportunity, every tool available to you to have the influence for God upon your grandchildren. Now, lastly, the letter D represents the word devoted. When I saw this on Facebook, I couldn't help but just, just adore it. Here this father kisses his son, and that son kisses his son. This, this is what it's all about, folks. This is devotion. This is being devoted. How that grandfather not only loves his grandson, but he loves his son. And that son loves his son. Devotion. Devoted means loving, committed, faithful. Can you see that in that picture? These words remind me of Grandfather Abraham, Father Isaac, and Son Jacob. Can you see that trinity of love? I, when I saw this picture, I called it the trinity of love. Father, Son, and Grandson. It could be grandmother, grandson, or son or daughter, granddaughter, grandson. It could be any of that, but the trinity of love. You see, Abraham's legacy of devotion lives on today in the country of Israel. That legacy from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob came down to David, and from King David on down to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are all blessed today because of that devotion of love, the legacy of love. That legacy continues today to every born-again believer as well. I am thankful for all four of my grandparents. They have all gone to be with the Lord years ago. I remember as a little boy attending my mother's father's funeral. I was three years old. And I can remember sitting in that little old church. He was a, was a great, great Christian man. He was a Baptist that loved the Lord. And I remember that preacher, he preached like thunder. And I was so tired. As You know, little, I realized that little children get tired. I mean... I didn't understand that as, as, uh, as an adult, but going back in my memory as I look back and think about, you know, what, what I experienced as a child. And then I remember going out to the cemetery, and Brent and I have been there. It's just a dirt patch. It's actually very pathetic. Uh, needs a lot of work done to it. It's a little old place in Oklahoma, and uh, when you're poor, you don't get much. But I remember attending that funeral, my mother weeping so bad because my mother was the youngest child in that family. But I remember being so tired and her holding my hand and having me stand there that I just finally sat down in that dirt. And my mother hated that. My mom was a clean, clean freak. It, you had to just stay clean all the time, you know. I didn't care. I was crying, screaming. I needed to sit down. My little legs wouldn't hold me up anymore. So my kingdom kids worker over here knows that all about that stuff when your legs won't hold you. But nevertheless, my grandfather loved all of his grandchildren, and I remember 
the influence of his godly life that he had upon all of his children and grandchildren. Then my mother's mother was Gracie Neal. She was a devoted Pentecostal who lived for God. She loved the Lord. Now, she was one of them real Pentecostals. I mean, she got going them trances and stuff. She would go shaking and dancing all over. My mom said it would scare her to death. My mom didn't care for Pentecostal people because she'd see her mother fall down on the floor and be out for a long time, and she'd think she was dead. She said, I don't want to go to them Pentecostal churches. And, you know, they're dying in there. Well, they, they weren't dying. She just, she just didn't understand it. But old Gracie, she loved God, and she knew how to intercede and pray. And I thank God for the legacy of her devotion to God and to her family. My father's father was James Morin. He was known lovingly as Buddy. He, everybody called him Buddy, Buddy Morin. And then when he went blind, they called him Blind Bud. He was looking for old Blind Bud. Now, before he went blind, during the Great Depression, he, he had been a rancher, and uh, the family lost everything that they had, everything. My dad said the fa family went from Texas into Oklahoma in a place called Comanche, Oklahoma, on the Chisholm Trail because they used to drive cattle down that trail. And he found a place alongside the river and began to dig into it, just like they call that place over by Modesto, River Bank. There's a reason for that. They dug into that river bank, and they made dugouts, places where they could live. And my dad said that's where they lived. And his father was cutting wood in one of those nearby forests when he had an encounter. My grandfather had an encounter with Jesus Christ. He had an axe slung over his shoulder, and he was a rough, tough, mean little Irishman that people didn't mess with. And, uh, but when he had an encounter with Jesus, his life completely changed. That axe fell off of his shoulder, and he stood face to face with Jesus. And he had a discussion. I don't remember all the conversation, but he fell on his knees right there before the Lord. And he cut down that tree. <laughs> Made him an altar. He began to pray from that time on. Right there, he worshiped God. Went in. Life changed. Never to be the same again. And I know that legacy, that devotion, passed down to his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. My dad said he'd be out in the fields plowing because they had to plow their little ground, whatever they had to live off of, whatever they raised. I loved, I loved being out in those fields with them when we'd go back and visit. But he had a team of mules. And they tore that ground up and planted they had great crops. My dad said he'd hear his father say to his mother, or his wife, Vera, my grandmother. He said, Vera, I don't think I'm going to church tonight because they'd have a revival. My grandfather had come in that evening. My dad said he'd hear him whistling, singing, get his little basin out, he'd shave. Get ready to go. He said, Vera, get the kids ready. We're going to church. He said they'd walk two or three miles to wherever the meeting was. He said he'd go on till after midnight and they'd walk back. He said he'd carry the little ones. They'd go to bed. He'd be up early in the morning out there in them fields again. But my grandmother said to him, I thought you was tired. You, you, you weren't going to go. He says, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. You know, that's the kind of testimony church listened to me today. That's the kind of testimony that will stand against you and I when we're too tired to go to church. I don't feel like it. I don't want to go. See, God sees the heart. See, when you love God, you'll be with God's people. I believe it. I believe the devotion is there. That old man loved God. I'll never forget him. I love my grandfather. He's a wonderful man. He talked about Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses come to his door. Jehovah Witness, come on in. I'm a Jehovah Witness. 
He had talked to them about God, about it. It didn't matter what they were. He had talked to them. He had shared Jesus with them. When he went blind, somehow they ended up in the Nazarene church. I don't know. They were, they were very evangelical. And his, they gave him a job. He had the phone ministry. You weren't in church on Sunday. He was on the phone calling you. We missed you. What's going on? What can we do? How can we help you? Let me pray for you. As a praying old man. I remember one time I was about eight or nine years old. My brother and I, we were laying down taking a nap. We did, I hated naps. I, I, I hate them naps. Oh, I love them now. Can't get, en- <laughs> can't get enough of them now. But I remember laying down this old country house that my dad bought for them when he was in the military during World War II in some land. It was my grandfather. He said, that's yours. My dad bought it for him. Nobody else. My dad loved his father. Now, that love was passed on to me, and I loved that old man. Anyway, my parents would make their annual trip back to Oklahoma to visit their parents and all their family back there. All of us kids were born here and raised here. But I liked the country. I liked their life. I remember laying down and they're going, my parents and whoever else was my siblings, they're all going. They, I was too much of a handful. I know they had to leave me there. So left my younger brother, two years younger than me, with me. We were laying down and I heard the screen door open. I rolled around and looked. Dear Joe, this woman was about that tall. That's the most ugliest woman I've ever seen in my life. She had a big old hook nose, warts all over her face, and I screamed to the top of my lungs. Ah! It's a witch! <laughs> my brother woke up and saw her, and he screamed, ah! We ran into the living room, the only room that had in the house beside the kitchen. Ran in there, Grandpa's sitting in his rocking chair. What's going on, boy? He's blind. What's going on? We jumped right in his lap and was hanging on. It's a witch, Grandpa. It's a witch. Oh, buddy, it's just me. And he just laughed. Oh, he had a great time. But I guarantee you, we weren't letting go of Grandpa. That old lady had to leave before we got out of his lap. I love that old man. He'll take care of you. He was devoted. My father's mother, whom I loved most of grandparents. I I hated to say it, but you can't have favorites, but she was my favorite. Her name was Vera Morin. Now, I deliberately did not bring pictures of them today because I did not think it would be fair to you not to show your grandparents as well. We're going to leave that trinity of love right up. But my grandmother, Vera, was a devout Christian. She received the baptism of the Holy Spirit under my father's ministry. My dad would go back there and hold tent meetings, revival meetings, Pentecostal meetings, and people get saved and healed and filled with the Holy Spirit. And one night in one of those meetings, his mother got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Grandpa, he didn't know too much about that Holy Ghost stuff. He, that's why closest he could get to it was a Nazarene church. That's about it. They were evangelical and fundamental, but they, they weren't going for no baptism in the Holy Spirit, but Grandma did. I loved my Grandma. I sat in her lap on that little bus that went out to my grandfather Neil's uh, funeral when I was three years old. My mom and all her siblings were with the family, and I was coming with my grandma Morin to the Neil funeral. I remember sitting in my grand. My grandmother was very large, and uh, not extremely large, but a large woman. That didn't mean anything to me. You get her bigger, the bigger the better. I'm hanging on grandma. I'm hanging on grandma. I love that grandma. I put my hand. I'm trying to find everything she had. On. Get your hand out of there. I mean, I mean, I had my hand everywhere. Bam, bam. Yeah, she's teaching. She's teaching me how to act. 
I didn't learn too much, but I did. I, got, <laughs> I learned with her. <laughs> I loved that old woman. She loved me. She knew I was an ornery little kid. But she had the grandmother's love that I needed. You see, sometimes kids don't always need the, the wooden spoon, the spatula, or whatever the hand. They just need you to be held tightly and to be loved. Love beyond whatever it is that they, they're trying to refuse. Grandparents, love, love, love your grandchildren. They need it today now more than ever before because we live in an even more loveless society. It may not be what you want to do, but that's what those children need. Leave a legacy of love. Anyway, I remember going out in them fields and, and, and planting corn with my grandmother, planting okra, planting black-eyed peas. We'd be bent over. That old woman had a hole. Uh, she could make the most beautiful rows, and we'd be down. I, after a while, I'd get upset, and I'd just hit the dirt. Don't you do that, boy. You know, be playing around, messing around. I had to fix it all up again. I'd be out there in that Oklahoma sun and not know it, but I'd get bumps that big, blisters on my back, water blisters. Have you ever been burnt with the sun that bad? Oh, people back there know that sun is hot. And I remember them putting alcohol on my back, and I've got them scars on my back from having been in those summers out there with my grandparents. But I wouldn't have traded it for a minute. I thank God for the devotion of my grandparents. They loved me, and I loved them. I thank God for their devotion to the Lord because that legacy has been passed on. I've tried to pass it on to my children and to my grandchildren and to my great-grandchildren. One of my great-grandchildren, Livy, we were so astounded whenever she was really beginning to talk and we asked her one time to pray during Thanksgiving. And she said, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. And I thought, oh, how wonderful, baby. I hope you love Jesus all your life. Oh, my prayer. Now, as we close today, the Apostle Paul warned his son in the faith, Timothy, about the last days. Let me read it to you. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. But mark this well. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. And that will include grandparents. Ungrateful, unholy without love, unforgiving, slanderous, brutal, without self-control, not lovers of the good. You're seeing this today, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. You see, I'm urging you to realize that we are living in these times. So in spite of these terrible times, we need to live godly before the Lord. And you know what? Paul was reminding of the legacy in Timothy's life. Remember this in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 5? He said, I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. See, it was grandmother, it was grandmother that taught her daughter the word of God. It was grandmother that now taught Timothy the word of God. And so God used Paul to remind him Look, you have a sincere faith. And it came because of the devotion of your grandmother. So grandparents, please, exercise every 
gift that you have, every skill, every ability that you have to bring the presence of God into the lives of your grandchildren. And yet, in spite of these terrible times, Paul encouraged Timothy to remain in the faith, to stay in the Word of God. And this is what he says to him in 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 and 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you love, learned it. He, he's referring to his grandmother and mother. You know how from infancy you have known. See, not a 10, 15-year-old. From infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So I urge you today, grandparents and parents, from infancy, raise your children up in the word of God, in the ways of the Lord. Well, we're out of time, but I want to encourage each of you to treasure the memory of your deceased grandparents and to honor your living grandparents. You are their legacy. You are the legacy of your grandparents and of your parents. Remember, grandparents are grand. They're good, they're reliable, their rules count because they're absolute when you're gone. They're neat, they're excellent. They bring happiness and joy and they are devoted to their grandchildren. Let's pray. Father, today we thank you for the precious word of God and the legacy that you have given to your people from the time of creation to the present, how you, O oh Lord, spared and saved humanity down through Noah to this present day. You have given to us through your chosen people that you selected out of all people. You chose Abram, a Gentile, and out of him would come the 12 tribes of Israel. And through those tribes in the line of the tribe of Judah would come, would come King Jesus, our Savior. Lord, we are thankful to God for all of your blessing. We are thankful because your word has made us wise unto salvation. We are thankful, Lord, that we know you today and that we have your word to live by and your word to pass on to our grandchildren and to those that we love. Lord, today, touch our lives. I pray, God, that you will bless every grandparent. Grandparents, stand right now. I want every grandparent to stand. If you're a grandparent or going to be a grandparent, stand. You're a grandparent. Homie's got to stand because he got, he got a grandbaby on the way. And so you get, you get a card too. Lord, in our prayer today, we ask you to bless these grandparents. They have sit and listened to me today. This is what you gave me to say to them, that grandparents are good. They're good. Lord, we are to bring happiness and joy into the lives of our grandchildren. And that we are reliable. Oh God, we can be dependent, dependent upon. Father, in Jesus' name, let their grandchildren depend upon them. They are absolute. Remember, Lord, as they have their grandchildren, they'll make the house rules. And of course, they're not going to violate their children's rules and do things that are unacceptable. But grandparents get the right to spoil their grandkids. Father, today we thank you for these grandparents that are neat. They're wonderful and they are devoted. And so we ask your blessings to be upon them and upon these great grandparents and great great grandparents. Father, today we celebrate each one of them. And now, Lord, you said to me, pray for them to give them strength and health. So I pray as we get older that you'll touch our bodies and help us to have the strength to embrace our grandchildren and to love them and to, 
to be able to enjoy them in doing things they like to do that will bring honor and joy to you. Bless, bless, bless these grandparents and you receive all the glory for we ask this in Jesus' name and everyone said amen.